Prana je sanskrtska riječ koja označava životnu silu, a zapravo neku univerzalnu kozmičku energiju koja prožima svemir na svim razinama. U Kini i Japanu poznata je kao ki ili chi, na Polineziji zovu je mana. Stari njemci zvali su je od, a u Amerikama bila je poznata kao orenda. No, kako god je se nazivalo, smatralo se da se nalazi u neživim tvarima kao i u živim bićima. Drevni tekstovi smatraju da je upravo ona ta koja pokreće tjelesne funkcije i animira nas. Zato su se često puta njoj utjecali u potrazi za raznim vidovima isciljivanja. Što više, u tu svrhu svaki čovjek može do neke razine koristiti pranu. Te su prakse preživjele iz davnina, pa i danas postoje praktikanti isciljivanja pranom poput Hektora Ramosa. Hektora i pranu ugostili smo ovdje, na rubu znanosti. Dobro večer. Gospodin Hektor Ramos, filipinac po rođenju, živio je u Indiji, Sjedinjenim državama, a zadnjih godina djeluje u Evropi, konkretno sa sjedištem u Amsterdamu, gdje se bavi suvremenim isciljivanjem pranom. Dobro večer. Good evening. Što je to isciljivanje pranom generalno i što je to i tko je osmislio suvremeno isciljivanje pranom, barem pod tim nazivom? Yes. The so-called prana or pranic healing is actually a system of healing which makes use of prana or what we call life force energy. Uh, the healer absorbs the prana from the surrounding and transfers it to, to the affected part, either for the person's own healing or for somebody else's body. Mm -hmm. And this could be used for, let's say, physical or even maybe emotional difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, the person who introduced this, actually there's what you call uh, ancient pranic healing, but the modern form of pranic healing was reintroduced to the world by a man known as uh, Chua Kok Sui. Mm -hmm. He authored three or several books on pranic healing. I met him in, uh, in 1987 when I was living in Manila. I think I was about 19 years old back then. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had injuries from childhood, which I sought healing for. And uh, maybe in a few weeks' time, he, he, was able, he was able to get rid of my body pain. Postoji li razlika ili je reč o sinonimu kada se upotrebljava pojam prana i pojam chi ili ki, ovisno govorili se o Japanu ili Kini? Yes. Of course, in Chinese, prana is, is what we call qi uh -huh. in Chinese, and in Japanese we call it ki. Uh -huh. But more or less, the, it's the same type of subtle energy we're talking about. We call it life force. It's the vital energy which we can absorb from the sun, uh -huh. from the air that we breathe, from the ground, from trees, from water, from food. Uh -huh. So it has many sources. Što je Chua Kok Sui zapravo želio napraviti ili stvoriti kada je napisao tih, čak rekao bih, 15-ak knjiga od kojih se mnoge bave suvremenim isciljivanjem branom? Mogući zaključaj je da je na neki način starija i kompleksnija znanja možda htio pretvoriti u neku praktičniju formu ili je možda nešto drugo bilo po sredi? Yes. Master Cha, from, uh, from what I understand, what he told us, his, his pupils, was that, you know, uh, from a young age, he, he got exposed to different healing arts, you know, different healing systems, different healing practitioners. And then he began to research, he began to want to have the goal of, I guess, demystifying, simplifying the healing systems in a way which would enable a, a common person you know, without any clairvoyance or psychic ability, a normal person, like a day-to-day -day person like me. I, I wasn't born a healer. I wasn't born a psychic or clairvoyant. But by following his simplified techniques, then I'm able to heal my own body or somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what one of his main goals was, to, 
simplify the healing system so that an ordinary person can do it. And number two, he said that he wanted to, using this, to introduce people to the more subtle parts of our being, which is, I guess, spirituality. Mm -hmm. So he considered pranic healing as a bridge from the more physical dimension to the subtle mm -hmm. or more spiritual. Koje bi bile te glavne razlike između svih tih tradicionalnih načinja korištenja čija ili prane u odnosu na ovo suvremeno, znači na neki način pojednostavljeno koje je u isto vrijeme, kako on rekao, i pojednostavljeno i mehanicističko i duhovno mehanicističko, zato ima jednostavna pravila, mm -hmm. a na neki način duhovno ipak, jer se ona osnovna ideja o povezivanju sa nekakvim kanalima, sa svijetom oko nas nije izgubila. Znači, koji dio i kako je sažet i pojednostavljen i koja je ta prava razlika između ovog o čemu danas pričamo i onog s čim je, što je zapravo čovjek kog su i uzeo i onda preoblikovao? Yes. Uh, for example, growing up in the Philippines, uh... My grandmother, one time, for example, I was having stomach pain. So what she did was she got a, a branch of leaves and then she just started sweeping in mm -hmm. front of my stomach. And gradually my, my pain disappeared. So I asked her, what, what did you do? What is that about? And she said, I, I don't really know, but that's how we were taught. Mm. So, you know, in, in the older systems, not much explanation really was given okay and people did not understand many things but in pranic healing what Master Cho did was he gave clear concepts for example that around your physical body is an energy field and when you have physical sickness there's an energy imbalance like instead of the energy field looking bright uh, the energy looks grayish so he developed techniques wherein, instead of using leaves, for example, you, you would just use your hands to get rid of that, that energy. Mm -hmm. So, Master Cho has systematized it. You know, there, there, there are like steps. For example, the healer is trained to, number one, feel the energy in the hands. That's called sensitizing. Number two, the healer is trained to feel the energy around the body of the person. This is what you call scanning. You know, it's like a diagnostic tool, which gives you an idea how the energy level of the person is, or the affected part. Then after that, you know, there, there's a technique called cleansing. Either the whole aura around the body, aura is the energy field, as you know, or the affected part is cleansed, the dirty energy is removed. And then the next step is, you know, the healer would transfer the energy. Mm -hmm. So the healer, the healer knows the technique, how to absorb the energy, the prana from the surrounding, how to transfer it, and then how to release the energy completely so the, the patient could fully assimilate it. And also how to disconnect energetically from the patient. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, in a way it's very technical, mm -hmm. step by step, but at the same time, it relies a lot on sensitivity uh -huh. you know it's it's not robotic it's uh, it relies a lot on the ability to feel subtle energies može li se nekako riječima ili pojmovima opisati o kakvim je senzacijama riječ znači ljudi koji uče ili su već naučili za početak dijagnosticirati ono što je recimo čovjek kako su i napisao paranormalno dijagnosticiranje bez upotrebe vidovitosti što možda nije pravi izraz nego isceljivanje pranom, yes. što je također rekao. Znači, kako bi mm -hmm. se, koje su to senzacije, na koji način čovjek dovodi sebe u stanje da odjednom počinje nešto osjećati? I što zapravo on misli da osjeća? Osjeća li nešto toplo, hladno, vjetrić, mm -hmm. nekakvu senzaciju? Kako bi se to moglo opisati ili na koji način naše tijelo pretvara te osjete u nešto što je nama poznato? Yes. Uh, based on what you call clairvoyant investigations and also using what science now calls Kirlian photographic systems, uh, the, the physical body is surrounded by an energy field and there are different parts to it. One part is what you call the, the inner aura. 
it's about well in the English system I believe it's about maybe four to six inches around so it, it follows the shape of the body okay so uh, the person's average size uh, is the basis of the, the healers idea whether there's little energy in a certain part or there's too much energy on a certain part so to determine this the healer is first trained to feel the energies on the hand so the way we were trained is number one you have to press the center of your palms those who are wanting to develop this even the fingertips and then if you want you could try it with mm -hmm. me <laughs> <laughs> yes and then what you're going to do is you're going to just concentrate on the center of your palms you know just be aware of the palms and the fingertips and then begin to just observe your breath while aware of the palms so you're going to do this for about seven breathing cycles or more if you want and the idea is not to expect anything, not to imagine anything, but just to concentrate, be aware of the center of the palms. And whatever sensations you feel, you know, just be aware of them. Don't overanalyze anything. Now, after about seven breathing cycles, you're going to pull your hands apart slowly, very slowly. And then you're going to push your hands close to each other without touching and then slowly pull your hands apart slowly and then push so again you're going to do this for about maybe seven times that's about three times already that's four let's do three more times That's five, about two more. These are simple exercises devised by Master Chokok Sui to enable people to feel the energy uh, field on their hands and fingers. Now, after that, you're going to just gently move your hands in root rotating manner. And then reverse. So again, all the time you're not imagining or analyzing, you're just observing and watching, trying to sense. Then reverse. And reverse. Uh, as healers, we're trained to do this. Maybe we practice this five minutes every day for about one week. Mm -hmm. After that, more or less, the sensations are easy to feel. So like that like that simple exercises mm -hmm. but uh, normally people would feel sometimes a pressure mm -hmm. i don't know if you feel anything pa kada bih opisao te senzacije osjetio bih recimo nekakvu vrstu topline nekakvu vrst ne bih to nazvao trnac al kao da postoji neki otpor u zraku i tako senzacije koje baš nisu lako opisive riječima nisu također niti umišljenja nisu niti proizvod nekakvog placebo nego jednostavno Nešto, nešto je tu. Eto, recimo, tako bih to sažao. Yes, it's very tangible, mm -hmm. right? So anyway, the idea is, when in our study of pranic healing, we study that there are hand energy centers and, and fingers. In fact, in Kirlian photography, I remember we would experiment with the electromagnetic plate. When you put your hand, you could see the rays of light shooting out, especially from the fingertips. Mm -hmm. You could see light. And then after doing pranic healing mm -hmm. on your hand, you could see that the light uh, radiation is much more. Mm -hmm. So anyway, by doing these simple exercises, you will feel, some people feel magnetic sensations, some people feel repulsion, some people feel like tingling. Uh, I personally feel a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and sometimes heat. And sometimes I could sense like a grinding sensation. So the idea is this. Different people have different uh, sensations when they do this. So if in my case, for example, I feel pressure when I do this, when I feel the energy field of a person, that feeling of, sense of pressure is my reference point. 
I'm not going to look for heat mm -hmm. or other thing. So when I move my hand, maybe from one meter away to the elbow or shoulder, and as I, my hand goes closer to the body and I feel pressure, I would stop. And I would have an idea of the energy level on that part. And then I would feel other parts of the body. Mm -hmm. So, in, for example, in the case of a stomach ulcer or arthritis on the knee, you know, uh, when I feel the affected part and the energy level is only maybe two or three centimeters, that's what we call lack of energy depletion. So that indicates to me that I, I as a therapist, I need to absorb energy, clean that part first, absorb energy or prana, and transfer it until the energy level goes to the normal mm -hmm. average size for that person. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we are helping the body balance its own energy. Mm -hmm. However, for certain cases like, for example, inflammation or burn, or cyst or tumor, in our experience, when you feel the energy, if the normal energy level is about eight centimeters and the energy level on the cystic area is, let's say, double that size, that indicates that it's a congestion. Mm -hmm. So in this case, in pranic healing, you do not energize that because you're going to make the cyst grow more. In fact, you need to reduce remove the excess energy and dispose of it properly. Mm -hmm. So by repeatedly doing that for many, many sessions and taking care of other factors, the physical symptoms gradually disappear. Mm -hmm. The idea is something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, zanimljivo što je uh, u stvari ideja koju iznosi u knjigama Choa Kuk Sui u stvari bila, rekao bih, vrlo demokratična. Uh, ideja je bila primjerice, baš je bilo naglašeno u više navrata i spomenuto, e, mogućnost ili davanje alata roditeljima da pomognu svoj djeci u trenucima kada se zbiva nešto od onih e, stvari koje su jako nezgodne, a možda nisu nikakve traumatične. Glavo bolje, zubo bolje, grlo bolje, upale pluća mm -hmm. i takve druge stvari. Znači, na neki način e, aktiviranje potencijala koji e, u svakom čovjeku postoje i svaki čovjek do neke mjere može pomagati nekom drugom. Nije to ništa onako e, elitistički kako je često puta yes. bilo predstavljeno od mnogih ljudi da samo oni to mogu i nitko drugi. E, mm -hmm. Tako da bih rekao da je to jedna od inovacija. E, kad pričamo o drevnoj kineskoj medicini koja koristi izraz či umjesto prana. E, koje su tu razine e, tog e, liječenja pomoću čija, odnosno tradicionalne kineske medicine? Mm -hmm. um, Masa Choa was born in a Chinese mm. family, so he, he used to talk about these levels of healing. And he said, the first level is more physical, right? Mm. Like, you apply maybe massage or body work, you know, you, you do acupressure, right? Mm. So it's much more physical, but when you touch the physical body, it affects the energy body. Then he says the second level is, next to that you, you apply herbs, you know, either on the skin or the affected part, or you internally drink it or take it. So it affects also the energy body. And then he said, you know, the next level is you apply, let's say, acupuncture. So this is more energetic. It, it affects the the what you call canals or channels of energies through which chi or prana flows. Because the problem in healing is sometimes due to physical factor or emotional factor, uh, certain meridians get blocked. So by either putting pressure with your fingers or needles, you could affect it. Mm -hmm. um, however, in, in pranic healing, uh, what we do is actually without touching the body, you could actually unblock the, the meridians by simply using your hand and your intention. Then you, you throw the, the energy which is causing mm -hmm. the blockage. Mm -hmm. And then you transfer energy. And the idea is you, you do not use your own energy. You know, mm -hmm. As a healer, you're trained to absorb chi or prana from the sun, from the air, or from the earth. And then you transfer it. Um, the idea is, if you use your own energy, 
it tends to lead to depletion. The healer becomes weak. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been uh, practicing this for maybe close to 30 years. And actually, my body today is much healthier than back then. Mm -hmm. My body was sickly when I met Master mm -hmm. Chua. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chua, uh, Koksu has mentioned that there are three kinds of Chia in nature. That is the one that you have mentioned, that is the sun. Zrak mm -hmm. i zemlja. E, ono što je kod nas poznato i mnogi ljudi na zapadu radite vježbe Qigong, e, u stvari je riječ o korištenju čija bez tjelesnog dodira. E, taj Qigong se dijeli u dvije škole, unutarnju mm -hmm. i vanjsku. E, kako je tradicionalno e, se gledalo na unutarnju, a kako na vanjsku? Koja je bila zahtjevnija, koja je bila korisnija? Kada pričamo o, mislim da to u stvari ima veze sa izvorom čija. S obzirom da su mnogi liječnici ipak i koristili svoj vlastiti či, nisu yes. uvijek koristili vanjski iz nekog razloga. Majstori či gonga i slično. Yes. Uh, the way uh, we were taught was that Master Cho used to describe that um, in one system the practitioner is trained to harness, absorb a lot of chi from the surrounding, build up tremendous chi or prana in his or her own body and aura. Then once it's very strong, then the healer would transfer the energy to somebody for healing. This is what he calls a, a water pitcher approach, where you, you, know, you get the pitcher, you fill it with water, and you pour it on the glass. But then eventually the pitcher gets empty. Mm -hmm. So then you have to refill it. So that's, that's why in some systems, they, after they heal two, three patients, they have to take a break maybe for a few days or a week or so to replenish again. So that's a different system. Master Chua prefers the system which is called a water pump approach wherein the healer constantly receives prana and transfers some of what he or she receives. Uh, you, you're not supposed to really transfer everything. You're supposed to retain some so that after many years of practice your energy becomes stronger, you, mm -hmm. you accumulate mm -hmm. energy and you become healthier. Uvijek posrednik uzima 10%, to se zna. Maybe more. Kada pričamo o akupunkturnim točkama, njih naravno ima jako puno, međutim u ovom pojednostavljenom sustavu koji je zapravo namenjen time da svaki čovjek može naučiti samom sebi i svojim bližnjima pomoći, sve je svedeno na 11 akupunkturnih točaka, ja sam ovdje zapisao i ta imena kineska, tak suelun mm. ili xio suelun, nije ni važno, možemo se držati samo opisno. E, o kojim je e, mjestima riječ, zbog čega je jedan iz njih, gdje se nalaze i čemu služe? Mm -hmm. yes. in, in reality, if you study Chinese medicine traditionally, there are many, many acupuncture points. But in the pranic healing book, which Master Cho presented to the public, he mentions uh, 11 specific Uh, what you call this very important acupuncture points and many of these uh, points correspond to what we call energy centers or chakras in, in the Indian system so actually these are major chakras or major energy system so there's one on top of the head which is you know it has an Indian name a Chinese name but we simply call it the crown energy center of course When they put the needle, they put it on a small spot, but actually the actual energy center is big, you know, maybe four, five, six inches in diameter. And there's one in the forehead, and there's one in between the eyebrows. Again, the center is small, but the energy is, mm -hmm. is big. And they have specific physical, uh, physiological and psychological functions. So there's one on the throat, which energizes, for example, your thyroid, parathyroid, and also it affects your self-expression, your creativity. There's one at the center of the chest and one at the back. They're, they're counted as one. Then there's one, uh, this one, aside from energizing your thymus gland, your heart, your lungs, um, it also controls your higher emotions, like your ability to be happy, to be humorous, to be warm and loving. So when the heart chakra is, the energy point is depleted, we energize it through the back. And the person not just physically feels better, but happier. Mm -hmm. There's one also on the front, uh, you know, the space between the last two ribs. There's a small spot there, which is soft. There's a point there. Mm -hmm. 
and then there's a back counterpart we call this the solar plexus then there's one on the spleen it corresponds to the physical spleen front and back then there's one on your navel which energizes your small and large intestines and behind that this is not normally mentioned in Indian system but the Chinese mentions this as they call it Ming Men anyway the term does not matter but the Ming Men energizes the kidneys the adrenal glands and the blood pressure then there's one in the pubic area which energizes your the sex organs and the legs and then there's one at uh, the base of the spine which energizes the muscles and the bones in the body now this this energetic chakras or centers have very important psychological function so in pranic healing we we do not just address the the physical difficulties but often we we touch on the the emotional part of it kada pričamo o praktičnom uh, iscjeljivanju pranom na način kako je predstavljeno u nekim od ovih uh, knjiga da se može znači naučiti čovjeka da za tjedan dva već nešto primjenjuje na svojim uh, bližnjima za ove stvari koje smo već spominjali uh, koja je uloga u tome poznavanje tih 11 čakri kako njih koristiti što s njima u stvari yes. jer s obzirom na onom prvom dijelu razgovora je bilo riječ u stvari o opipavanju aure imali viška energije imali manjka energije i slično međutim kako to mm-hmm. implementirati što raditi s ovih 11 čakri ili akupunkturnih točaka koje se poklapaju s čakrama yes um, the knowledge of the chakras uh, actually is related to the organs and parts of the body which they control for example for somebody with a problem with digestion you know so either stomach pain constipation or loose bowel movement uh, there are two energy centers or chakras which energize these organs one is the navel and one is the solar plexus so when the person for example is let's say vomiting or you know having loose bowel movement then the healer without even you know checking other parts of the body the healer can immediately go to these two chakras clean them and thoroughly clean them and then begin to energize them to give immediate relief so in other systems they work on what you call correspondences for example i studied some what you call reflexology mm-hmm. in my younger years acupressure you know and in your hands or on the feet certain parts correspond to the stomach or the intestine so instead of working directly on this area you work on the hands or the feet and Master Cho said well that's good but you could also work directly on mm-hmm. the affected parts and also especially on the chakras which energizes or which energize the stomach the small and large intestines mm-hmm. so it's very very direct for example uh, you have cold or cough then you go straight to this chakra which energizes your sinuses mm. your nasal passages or your mm. you know your uh, ear tube što bi to bilo uh, pranično disanje a uh, pranic breathing um pranic breathing is actually a simplified abdominal breathing which we practice to enable us to absorb tremendous amount of prana so essentially the technique is simple Number one, you you exhale, and then you hold your breath, and then you inhale, then you hold your breath, and then you exhale, then you hold your breath. So there is what you call empty retention. Okay. Now, let me break down the technique. Number one, we use what you call the abdominal breathing. So the idea is when you inhale, your abdomen expands. When you exhale your abdomen contracts so we do not use chest breathing mm-hmm. we, we instead we relax the chest and the shoulders then when you inhale you just let your abdomen you know and as you exhale it goes in so this technique has been observed to enable you to absorb tremendous energy either from the sun when you're out sunbathing or just absorbing fresh air fresh mm-hmm. prana from the air or even from the ground or from the tree but the most important part of pranic breathing is before you inhale you must hold your breath first now the reason for this is when you hold your breath before inhaling 
and then you inhale, what will happen is there's tremendous rush of energy in your system. It, it almost like it creates a, a vacuum effect. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very, very powerful. It's very simple, but very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that there are two aure or two kinds of aure. One is the inner one, which is the body of the body. The other is the kind of jaeta around the body, a little bit wider. What is the difference in scanning and from which reason one scans the other and the other? Okay. Actually, in, in running healing, we talk about Actually, in the book, there are mention of three auras. But you're right, the, the two auras mentioned by is what you call the, the outer aura, which is about one meter or more. For some people who are very healthy, the outer aura can be easily two meters or more. You know, and you, when you come near them, you feel energized, mm -hmm. you feel happy, and for some reason, you just feel good. Mm -hmm. So these are people with very big outer aura. Now, the outer aura contains or contains subtle energies. You know, as humans, you know that we also have spiritual energy, we also have mental energy, we also have emotional energy. In fact, when, when a person is very angry, sometimes you sit, stand next to the person, you, you could sense something and you don't feel good sometimes. So, this outer aura contains subtle energies. But the so-called inner aura is it follows the shape of your physical body and in the so-called esoteric or spiritual studies the outer aura is actually the mold or the pattern for the physical body it through the chakras it absorbs prana and then through the the energy meridians prana is distributed to all cells and organs of the body so it keeps the body highly energized so, in pranic healing, we, we clean the outer aura and the inner aura. We clean the energy centers, and then we energize the energy centers. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in, in the case of pranic psychotherapy, for example, the person is under severe stress, or the person is very angry, we, we make sure that we clean the, the outer aura. It's a technique called uh, general cleansing. And from where is this technique? In general cleansing, uh, the healer, uh, it's hard to describe it, we need to demonstrate it actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, the healer does not, in pranic healing, it's, it's a, what you call a non-touch technique. Uh -huh. So the healer maintains a distance of maybe several centimeters from the skin of the patient. Because you're not touching the body, you're touching the, the aura, you're, you're using what you call the cup hand technique which is used to scrape off or remove dirty energy from both the outer and the inner aura okay uh, and the dirty energy is actually thrown into a, a waste disposal unit you do not just throw it to the floor mm -hmm. or to anywhere it's thrown in a, maybe a, a bucket of water maybe one liter of water with one cup of salt so water absorbs the dirty energy and salt breaks it down. Mm -hmm. So the front of the body and the sides and the back are cleansed. And normally most people would feel good already just by doing this. Što bi to bili zapravo neke ideje čak i postoje kad se spomene pojam bioplazmatični prsti, bioplazmatična ruka s obzirom da su upravo kirile nove fotografije još iz 20-ih, a u novije vrijeme i GDV kamere Konstantina Korotkova i drugih koji se bave naprednim inačicama te kirile nove fotografije, pokazalo je da zapravo u tom energetskom ili elektromagnetskom obliku čak i oštećni list ili čovjekom nedostaje neki dio tijela, on ga u energetskom obliku još uvijek ima. E sad, u kontekstu isjeljivanja pranom, što se, kakva je uloga tih bioplazmatičnih dijelova tijela, je li moguće možda čak i umom utjecati na ovaj bioplazmatični dio nas i što bi to bilo recimo bioplazmički otpad? Ok, the idea is this, we have different grades of matter, as you well know we have solid, liquid, gaseous, then the so-called 
what science calls as bioplasmic energy matter is what we call in pranic healing simply as you know the uh, the inner aura or the inner energy field um, but Master Chow said it's more than that but anyway uh, when when the energy body absorbs prana uh, the energy centers assimilate the energy and distributes to the the energy organs you have to understand that if you have a physical heart you also have what you call a corresponding energetic heart so it energizes and controls the physical heart the same your your eyes your lungs they have energetic counterparts so in some books they call this bioplasmic body as actually they call it energy double or etheric double so when these organs absorb and assimilate the energy you know it's it's like there's a waste product you know just like food you ingest then you have a waste product so then the waste product is actually expelled through the again through the chakras so the chakras absorb fresh energy then used up energies are expelled but sometimes due to certain factors the ability of the body uh, it's not just through the chakras but also directly the organs can expel sometimes due to certain factors maybe negative emotions or certain physical habits the ability of the energy body to expel is diminished so it becomes deceased or sickly so instead of the energy body looking like luminous white it looks grayish the the so-called used up energy has accumulated so then what the healer would do is the healer would gently remove that and to allow the area to absorb fresh prana again and further to help it further absorb energy the healer would transfer fresh prana so the idea is you are helping the body heal itself mm -hmm. but of course the body on its own heals itself u koji mjeri se uh, može primjenjivati isceljivanje pranom na daljinu danas doista uh, nije nepoznato a u literaturi postoje brojna istraživanja koja su prije svega rađena u Kini na Qigong majstorima i pogotovo uh, su tu korištene dosta nekakve jednostavne stvari znači mm -hmm. određene boce vode sa različitim čepovima na koje određeno vrijeme sa udaljenosti od 2000 km Qigong majstor nešto radi jedno od njih pa se promatra je li ona za koju je rekao da će raditi dosta se dogodilo neke promjene kroz mjerenja uh, raznih parametara vode no na koji način uh, u ovom uh, kontekstu o kojem danas pričamo koje su to načela ili kako isceljivati pranom na daljinu naravno da mm. s jedne strane je poznato da ljudi koji m, pokušavaju to raditi za nekog kog ne znaju ponekad je potreban nekakva predmet ili nešto što bi možda povezalo uh, s tom osobom. U nekim drugim slučajevima, ako su to bliske osobe, onda to čak i nije neophodno s obzirom da je moguće stvoriti mentalnu sliku osobe koju poznate. Ali ipak, uh, spomenuto su neka načela iscijeljivanja na daljinu pomoću prane. Uh, koja su to bila? U čemu je razlika kada mm. niste u mogućnosti opipati sve ovo o čemu smo do sada pričali? Yes. I remember, thank you, that's a very nice question. Uh, I remember when Master Chow first trained us, he would send the, uh, one person to another room and would, the other person would remain in one room as a healer. And then the healing would be performed and after that the person would be called back and would share the experience. And the idea of Master Chow is this. He, he says that our energy body is actually a small portion of the energy body of the earth because as we know everything has energy field and that includes the earth so the earth has an aura or energy field and everything inside the earth is within that aura so through that energy field of the earth from one country to another country from one city to another from one house to another you could actually send healing energy to another person and he said this is also based on the second principle that uh, prana or energy follows your th your thought you could direct it so some people use this with visualization some people use this with affirmation and some people use this just by imagining the person in front of them and performing the, the pranic healing technique mm -hmm. uh, što označava pojam pravilna 
eterička higijena. I što, je, I što je pravilna, i što je eterička, i što je higijena uopće u tom kontekstu. Yes. Etheric hygiene in, in the pranic healing context means that it's, it's your duty to, number one, keep your energy field clean and healthy. And also, the, number two, the energy field in your house, you should keep it healthy and clean. So what it means is, for example, as a healer, when you touch the energy body of a patient and then you start cleaning it, you start throwing it to your salt water solution, okay? That's part of etheric hygiene. You're not just throwing it to the floor because if somebody walks on that dirty energy, the person may absorb that and may develop the same symptom. So part of etheric hygiene is disposing of the deceased or dirty energy properly. You know, in the old times, people would throw it to the fire. Mm -hmm. Or I know of some people, they would use salt, do that in front of the affected part, then they would throw it to the fire. Mm -hmm. But Master Chow said, you could just simply use water, it absorbs mm -hmm. energy and salt because it breaks it down. Mm -hmm. it, it keeps the energy, you know, it's, it's almost like the earth regenerates the energy, mm -hmm. but you could help regenerate the energy faster by using water and salt. Mm -hmm. Now, after the healing, the healer also has to make sure that he cleans the hands. So, after healing a patient, we wash your hands with water and, and salt and mm -hmm. soap also up to the elbows. This is to prevent developing pain on the hands or developing the same symptoms as your patients. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important. Spominjali ste prije vezu čakri i određenih psihičkih stanja. Uh, isciljivanje pranom uh, nije vezano samo uz određeno otklanjanje bolova ili poremeće na fizičkom tijelu. Naravno, u jednom holističkom pogledu na svijet i nema velike razlike i fizičko proizlazi iz psihičkog, psih, psihičko proizlazi iz fizičkog i u stvari se radi o stalnoj povratnoj mm -hmm. sprezi. No, uh, kada pričamo o... o mislima i u onom u kontekstu onog što ste već ispomenuli da zapravo prana prati misli. Zanimljivo je e, naglasiti da m, postoje nešto što bi se moglo nazvati nekakvim e, oblicima misli ili čak i u knjizi jedno je rečeno e, misalnim entitetima. E, mm -hmm. Što bi oni bili? Kako yes. nastaju? Koliko se dugo zadrže? E, što su oni u stvari? Ok. Uh, thank you. That's a good question. In, in the aura, it's been observed that when a person is thinking about something, in the aura, a certain form of energy appears. For, for example, if you're thinking of your car, or your, your house, or an object, in, in, in front of your face, for example, the image of what you're thinking of appears. This is what uh, so-called mind readers or clairvoyants would see. So sometimes they would look at you and they would say, oh, you're thinking of this person. So it's because they could see your thought form. So when you think, there's a form to your thought which corresponds to what you're thinking of. Now, these thought forms normally, for example, you're reading uh, the news. Normally after a few minutes or a few hours, the thought forms which you have created already would have dissipated or disintegrated. However, when a person, for example, is in, got in, into, a, let's say, a, a traumatic experience, you know, uh, the traumatic experience, because of the intensity of the experience and the energy, the traumatic experience creates a, what you call a negative thought entity or traumatic thought form. So this becomes very, very long lasting. And it may last for many weeks, months or even years to the extent that it affects the way the person thinks and physically behaves. So in in the field which we call pranic psychotherapy, the healer would consciously remove in from the chakras what you call the traumatic energy or thought form. Mm -hmm. So when that is removed, then the person substantially gets free from from the past traumatic mm -hmm. experience. Može li prosječni čovjek koji nema velikih ambicija baviti se nekakvim vidom isciljivanja, osim u kontekstu da u 
kriznim trenucima pomogne nekom iz svoje bliske okoline. Na sličan način kao što recimo naučimo zamijeniti gumu na auto, a ne znamo popraviti cijeli automobil. Može li se on nositi sa recimo fobijama, traumama, obsesijama, kompulzijama i svim tim stvarima koji su očigledno vezani uz nešto što biste možda opisali kao misijone entitete ili forme, što je dosta dobra analogija bez obzira svaća li je mi doslovno ili je svaća li ne doslovno. Drugim ličima, kako isciljivati pranično ili na pomoću prane takve pojave ili recimo nasilne ili nekakve možda paranoidne pojave kod čovjeka? Ok. In the pranic healing system different physical ailments whether simple or chronic have different steps or protocol. So in the same way, in, in pranic psychotherapy, uh, different cases you know, have different protocol. For example, for somebody who is having stress and tension, then certain chakras are treated. For a person, let's say, who is, is having obsessive compulsive behavior, then the treatment is different. So what we do is, like me, for example, I. I follow, the, I follow the steps mentioned in the book. So it's different for compulsions, obsessions, or addictions. It's different for stress. It's different for anger. Uh, you know, the book is, is a manual, so I just follow it step by step. Da, to je točno. Knjiga je uh, puno više na ovih tehničkom priručniku uh, nego uh, nečem uh, egzotičnom uh, što bi čovjek očekivao nekakav neinformirani čitatelj. Recite nam u Hrvatskoj gdje se može, osim uh, ovih nekih knjiga od kojih su neke objavljene, neke još i nisu, neke možda neće ni biti, uh, gdje se uh, kod nas uh, u Hrvatskoj uh, može na neki način učiti onom ko nije knjiški tip, učiti ili upoznavati sa tehnikom praničnog isciljivanja, možda u svrhu baš koju sam rekao, upravo ovu, rekao bih, dosta demokratski vid upotrebe za svakodnevnu nekakvu, za svakodnevne situacije. I personally learned from the book, then I took classes. Jer vi zapravo imate u Amsterdamu neki centar, ako sam dobro shvatio. Ali... We have what what Master Cho did was he 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 trained people. Then, in different countries, you know there are centers and there are uh, trained authorized instructors. So, if people want to get healing and learn, then you know they contact the people uh -huh. in in this country. So uh -huh. we have. I guess I have to give you their contacts for uh -huh. people to. Drugim rečima postoje takvi centri i u Hrvatskoj. Yes, we have trained healers who have been practicing this for maybe at least a decade or many years. Znači već cijelo desetljeće. Dobro, u svom slučaju, Hektore, hvala vam na razgovoru. It's been a pleasure and I really enjoy my time. Drago mi je da vam se dopalo. I do neke sljedeće prilike, do uđenja. Thank you. Evo, hvala i vama na pažnji kad se govori o isceljivanju pranom ili čijem. Pravo pitanje zapravo jest u odnosu na ono što smo naviknuti misliti što to jest čovjek i što to jest svijet, kakvi nas to informacijski ili nekad zvani energetski obrazci povezuju, u konačnici što je život, što je njegovo pogonsko gorivo, jesu li to tek mehanički procesi sagorjevanja tvari ili postoje nešto subtilnije, ne tako lako uhvatljivo možda današnjim mjernim uređajima ili pak uhvatljivo ako mjerimo mjernim uređajima i tehnologijom koja bi bio čovjek sam. U konačnici možda je tek pred nama otkrivanje svijeta kakav je bio viđen u predtehnološka vremena u ono vrijeme dok je čovjek još bio mjera svih stvari. Lako noć!